Well, I don't know if this is your first podcast or not, but you're doing no. pretty good. Okay, like yeah, yeah, yeah like staying like <laughs> relatively close to the mic. So yeah, we got pretty good levels. I did stand up comedy for twenty years. So that's I what we, that's what I was the Bob and Tom show for twelve years. Yeah. So. This podcast of the Bourbon Pursuit is sponsored by the folks at thewhiskeywash.com, a lifestyle website for people who always make sure they have whiskey in their life. Not because it gives them style, but because it gives them life. Thewhiskeywash.com. Absolutely. So I guess let's let's talk about maybe some of the because there's a lot of brands in Heaven Hill. I mean, oh, there's a lot, but out even outside of whiskey, right? But we'll we'll focus on whiskey mm-hmm. and let's talk. I'll I'll name one off, and you kind of just give me a small little fact or tidbit about like <laughs> there's one I want to know about. Go ahead. Probably you, know you, go, you go. Tom first. Peters. I want to know about this. That's a new one on me. Oh really? I really don't know that one. It might be overseas then. A there friend are, of mine has given, yeah, has given me some Tom Peters. Was, where, was he overseas? No, no, it's mm-hmm. from Heaven Hill, I guess. Yeah. Well, these are <laughs> we'll – regardless, regardless – stop, stop the chump on a question. Regardless, <laughs> well, we have Daniel Stewart we, uh, that's overseas. And so Mark Twain, some of us around. Uh, some of those are all little regional brands. Yeah. And I don't even know them all. Right. So we, have, we, don't, we don't have any emphasis on – Tom Peters. So, so you know, so, guess, but that's yeah. you know that, that's easy to say. That's going to be our standard recipe, and then you can look on the label. If it says it's thirty six months old, that means it's three years old, and whatever proof it is, that's what's going to be. If it doesn't have an age on it, it's four years old, and whatever proof it is. Cool. Right. So let's start off with the easy one, Heaven Hill. Mm-hmm. Like, you think that's easy? Maybe <laughs> I don't know. But it's, there's a lot of different Heaven Hills. Yeah. yeah there is. <laughs> Heaven Hill's awesome. It's one of my favorites. But if you come to my if you, you come to my house, yeah, the uh, you're going to get the six year old bottle and bond. I mean, the bang for your buck. We don't want to tell too many people about this, right? Because, but it's a, it's a very thing to be very cool brand to be proud of. First of all, the name of the company is on the label. Uh, the company was started, made the first barrel December thirteenth, nineteen thirty five, which was a Friday. So Friday the thirteenth is very lucky for Heaven Hill, and. If you watch Forrest Gump, that is uh, the gold label, which is a four-year-old bottle and bond, which was a regional brand up in New York and New Jersey. Uh, we had some of it down around this way. Of course, Kentucky had everything because the company's from here. But when Lieutenant Dan is drinking in uh, Times Square in New Year's Eve and he, pu- and he rolls up and says, I'm here to be your first mate, Gump, he's got a bottle of Heaven Here four-year-old bottle and bond. So – and trust me, we did not pay for product placement <laughs> That's in, really that, awesome. in that movie. But the six-year-old has got two more years of age on him. Right. And so that makes that product the second oldest age state of bottle and bond on the planet. Cool. All right. And it's $12 uh, a bottle. Yeah, I know. That's, 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 the, that's the real secret. <laughs> that's the kicker right there. So Henry McKenna. Henry McKenna, my favorite whiskey that we make. So that is my absolute favorite. Bottle and bond. It's bottle and bond, which is going to be one of my favorites. But uh, ten years old, I think that is one of my sweet spots. You know, I like. I think I, I I'm pretty big between eight and fifteen years, and then over that it starts getting out of my wheelhouse. And younger than that, I like, I like younger too. But that really seems to bring out a lot of great barrel notes for me. Eight to fifteen years. Mm-hmm. Who was Henry that. McKenna? Henry McKenna was a Scots. I was an Irishman from the county Derry, and he came over to the United States in the 1830s. And he was a he knew how to make whiskey. Obviously, he came from Ireland. That's where they had it. But he was a miller, so he ground the grains for his neighbors because he was on a – right down near Hardin's Creek, probably right where Jacob Beam and the little creek that goes through Maker's Mark, that's Hardin's Creek. Uh, so he had to be on a creek with the wheel well that grind, grind the uh, grains for your neighbors. And like many people who got into distilling, he, they would trade. They would barter. He wouldn't say, oh, you owe me this much money because I just ground your grains up. He would keep – a percentage of that grain. And then he was going to make whiskey. He was going to make money out of it because he's going to make whis- whiskey from it. So he got into business and he started making whiskey in 1855. And then he brought his, uh, his uh, friend over, uh, Patrick Sweeney, I think was his friend who uh, two years later came and kind of ran the distilling operation. But his sons stayed in the business. It was a brand. It was a big brand. It, 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 it was around after Prohibition, obviously, when we bought it. Uh, I'm not sure what year that Heaven Hill bought it, but it's a it's a great brand. It's a it's a it's a single barrel. It's the it's the oldest age stated bottle and bond on the planet, and it's a single barrel. It, so if you look, one, there's too. only one other single barrel bottle and bond out there, but it's not thirty dollars. Right. And this is thirty dollars. Exactly. All right, uh, JTS Brown. I'm sure you all know because you're you know most guys know, but that's from the movie The Hustler. Uh, that's the that's the brand that uh, Fast Eddie Felson drank. Uh, when when uh, you ever watched the movie The Hustler. 
I haven't. I oh guess. my! Yeah, man, you lose your guy card. Here. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but he's uh, so when uh, when Fast Eddie Felson, uh, who's uh, who's playing Minnesota Fats, uh, so he is um, when they're playing, they they start to get serious. They play for like fourteen or eighteen hours, and you have them playing. They they want to get serious. And he says, uh, "Who's the actor who plays uh, Fast Eddie Felson?" Um, it's it's, it's uh, Jackie Gleason plays Minnesota Fats. You know, he says uh, 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 Jackie Gleason's character, Minnesota Fats, says uh, Preacher, who's the nickname of the guy. Preacher, here's a couple dollars. Go down to the tavern or to the store. Get me a bottle of white 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 tavern whiskey, a glass, and some ice. He usually wore a three piece suit and a carnation. He looked great all the time. And uh, Paul Newman's character says. Uh, Fast Eddie Felson, hey, preacher, here's a couple dollars. Go get me a bottle of J.T.S. Brown. No, no glass, no ice. And he just drank it out of the bottle. You know? nice. And, of course, when he did the re- remake of The Color of Money, uh, he was the sales rep for J.T.S. Brown. But J.T.S. Brown, the best name, and, the, and the, you know, that's kind of a, what brought it, brings it. We always get calls on J.T.S. Brown after that movie plays. But uh, that's John Thompson Street Brown. See, J.T.S. Brown. I love this. is This is my favorite part right here. I, I just love naming these <laughs> off and learning yeah. these new things. From the Brown family. You know, that's oh, a, yeah. Well, that's, mm-hmm. that's a pretty prominent name. Let's go with one that I, I might stump you. Rittenhouse Rye. Where did Rittenhouse Rye probably come from? Well, that's Philadelphia. So that's, uh, you know, rye whiskey had its – they know rye is available in New York, Pennsylvania, Maryland. That's where you've had these rye distilleries because you, 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 you make whiskey from the grains that grow around you. In Ireland, Scotland, it's barley. They didn't have corn in the old world. It's a new world grain. So they use barley. So they're barley-based. Canada, a lot of rye. You know, that's what we get our rye from most our rye now from Canada because it's, it grows anywhere. It's a grass. But it just happened to grow better in the north. So Canada, New York, uh, Maryland, um, Pennsylvania. So that's rye whiskey becomes kind of their evolution. Like we evolved because we have corn. We have a lot of corn around here. We have a lot of wheat. That's where you find wheat getting into the recipes. That the first two years, Henry McKenna made what we would call a, wheat, a, a weeded bourbon, uh, just like W. L. Weller was making in 1849. He put wheat into his recipes. Then you have, so you have all that in that evolution too. So uh, you you just have uh, you use what's around you. And Pikes in in, Pencil, in Pennsylvania was known for rye, mm-hmm. and so that's that brand started right after pr- Prohibition. I think that it was uh, 1937 when it finally came out. By 1939, 1940, it was a bottle and bond product because that's what you wanted to be. Yep, was bottle and bond. So just even like when uh, Heaven Hill started, they had their first bourbon was Bourbon Falls. It was a two year old, so it was a straight whiskey. It was important. A straight whiskey, not a blended whiskey, because that's the stuff that could have the iodine and all the stuff added to it. So that word straight was pure. Nothing but pure water added to it in age for at least two years old. So that was the goal. That's what made you different than Seagram's or Hiram Walker, the giants of the world who had Seagram's 7 and Seagram's 5 crown, and which eventually one of those became uh, which was VO. VO was Seagram's. Eventually, they had a 1964 launched a little brand called Crown Royal out of that. Okay, so those were blending houses. They were like going against Warren Buffett and and, and Donald Trump. You know, you don't want to go up against the monsters. So here in Kentucky, we made straight whiskey. Like, we'll let them have that. We want straight whiskey. And, you know, Bottle and Bond's going to be the what we want to go for. So uh, Rittenhouse became a house, you know, household. There was a lot of rye whiskey in Pennsylvania and mm-hmm. Maryland. Mm-hmm. And from that, we had our new Pikesville that just launched, which is a I was very about to ask about that. that. So yeah. Pikesville was a brand that's been around since 1895. So these are brands that we acquired when everybody else was going out of business. People were selling out, you know, because the, because there was a glut of whiskey after the Korean War. And there was a glut. So, it, you know, in time, it looks, look at the oil prices today. There's a glut. So who ever thought we'd see $1.90? Gas again ever. I saw dollar sixty the other day. How about that? Yeah, exactly. So that's what happened when there was a glut, and that's when when like the Bean family had to sell out in the sixties. That's when uh, uh, Hiram Walker purchased uh, Maker's Mark. That's when in nineteen eighty one. That's when uh, Stitzel Weller goes out of business. Okay, and we're still around because mm-hmm. they didn't diversify into other spirits. Our family diversified into other spirits. So that's how important it is to diversify, and. Make, make you know that's why everybody sells vodka and everybody sells rum, and but for us in Kentucky, 
the heart and soul is bourbon. If you, if you, it makes no sense to make bourbon or rye because it's so expensive. Yeah, it's a long term for your return on You can make rum today, <laughs> sell it tonight. You can make vodka today, sell it tonight. You have to have passion for it. So we spend $51 million a year in wood at Heaven Hill before we make the first drop with barrels. Mm-hmm. That doesn't make economic sense. <laughs> <laughs> make sure that ROI is there. You're, you're, yeah. Yeah, and then you've got to wait. the angel seed round, right? Like nobody's yeah. going to take you seriously. And then you've got to wait four <laughs> years, five years, six years, seven years, eight years. And so you've got to sit on that. And then you lose some every year. I mean, it's not a business model that anybody would sit there and go, oh, i got to get into this. All right. I've got three more just yeah. only because I'm, I'm very interested. Uh, J.W. Dant. J.W. Uh, Joseph Washington Dant. Uh, Yet another bomb. Dance Station, bomb. Kentucky. Uh, yeah, so, uh, Joe, uh, and that was a big brand that you know, he started in 1836. And his sons kept that bit, uh, going uh, and uh, ran the company after Prohibition, too. I think his sons did. So, uh, J.W. Dan is a, is a great, uh, cool old name. Another label that we have, uh, having a four year old 80 proof in some markets, it's a bottle and bond in, 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 in markets, too. It's a regional brand. Um, just like JTS Brown, just like uh, Heaven Hill Gold Label, just like T.W. Samuels. Okay, those were redundant brands. They were all the same age, some of the same proof, but they were all available in certain parts of the country. People say, what, what's the difference in them? Well, I guess you can say they're a small batch. They were different dumps, but they're basically the same whiskey, but they're regional brands. So that's why we chose when we have a national bottle and bond, we made it Evan Williams white label bottle and bond. We just launched that three years ago because you, because you can only use barrels that were put up in one season for bottle and bond because it's, it's the Eagle Scout. It's the most restrictive. You can't feed five bottle and bonds that are four years old, 100 proof. You've got to pick one. Evan Williams is number two selling bourbon in the world. We went with that. Yeah, right. Makes, Makes sense. sense. Yeah. There you go. All right. <laughs> I know. Connecting right. dots here. Yeah, yeah. Really? Really? <laughs> okay. So uh, the Bottle Chase brand, Parker's Heritage. Mm-hmm. Well, that came out because, you know, Parker, his birthday is in September, and the Bourbon Festival is in September. So that's when the release is for Parker's Heritage. And because he was in, he's been in the business for 56 years, uh, we'd honored him. And he and uh, Craig and Denny and Charlie, they, that, they, those barrels are, you know, we have projects aging right now because when we came out with the 13-year-old, the original year of the wheat whiskey that uh, Craig made, we always hold some barrels back because it could be a potential Parker's. So you got to think about these things 15, you know, 10, 15, 20 years in advance. So every year it's a different expression. And so last year was a, when we came out with an 8-year-old Malt. malt whiskey. Malt, yeah. So, uh, who's got malt whiskey and who's got eight-year-old malt whiskey? <laughs> we do. Yeah. <laughs> and, that's, and that was our sixth recipe that we had. So there, we have things aging that are other recipes and other things. And all of a sudden we'll come out with it and it'll be eight or ten years old. How did you do that? Well, we've been doing this a while. Yeah. Got some, got some uh-huh. secret stocks. And Parker had back. great, great insight and foresight to do that. And the family, you know, uh, is, is, you know it's, it's become one of our most – Influential brands, I believe so. All right, last one's a fun one: Fighting Cock. <laughs> yeah. Fighting Cock, great, great old brand too. Uh, that is a, a brand that uh, came out to poise against. You know, you, some, I, I boil our philosophy, and I don't know if our owners would agree with this. I think I've kind of asked them; they kind of, kind of do. But I boil it down to longer, stronger, cheaper. So you find the category leader, you age it longer in the barrel, you put it stronger in the bottle, and you charge less for it. So you don't find a lot of so the same is really backwards, doesn't it? <laughs> I think we're still here. <laughs> yeah. So fighting cock obviously was going up against wild turkey. So wild turkey fighting cock. Wild turkey's one hundred and one. Fighting cock's one hundred and three. Right. You know, it's got to play so the game. Right? Cheaper. 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 You know. Yeah. All right. So uh, then the last one I guess we'll talk about since the cat's out of the bag. Um, let's talk about Elijah Craig uh, and dropping the twelve year age statement. Mm-hmm. We've read all kinds of things that it's going to be a mix of eight to twelve year barrels now. Let's get your your kind of stance on age statements, right? Because I know you kind of have a – you can kind of go and rants a little bit about it, if you will, right? Well, age statements are important when it's an age-stated product. Age statements is something I've been talking about for a very long time. It's also something that Heaven Hill has more of than any distillery out there. It's changing labels and making changes like this are not easy decisions to make. But sometimes you have to make decisions. And 
five years ago, bourbon was just starting to become kind of a thing again. It was diamonds that always have been there. But for some reason, TV shows, personalities, the price of scotch and other imported, we're going to 70, 80 hours a bottle, and here's a bottle of, buy a bottle of Parker's for $80? That's as good as this 25-year-old scotch or whatever it is. You know, so people, you know, we have all these whiskey shows and... And different festivals that highlight so it's a, it's a lot of building blocks of why it became this huge big thing. But in 1986, when Elijah Craig launches, it's nine dollars and ninety nine cents a bottle, and not many people bought it because in the 80s, my dad and other people, they would look at that and say, and my dad told me, my dad drank Heaven Hill Green Label six year old ninety proof. Till the day you die, he said, I don't trust a bourbon over six years old. And most of the expressions that were available were four, five, six years old. You didn't see a whole lot of old bourbons or old whiskeys out there. If you did, it's because it was a glut in the market. It didn't sell. So you, you, you bottle it under a different thing and try to sell it. So back then in the 80s, no one was buying very few people were buying Elijah Craig at $9.99 a bottle. And when other companies like Jim Beam and I.W. Harper and different ones had older whiskeys, they were putting them in decanters because they didn't think you'd buy old whiskey. Like my, People like my dad weren't going to buy a 10-year-old whiskey. But they might buy it if it's in a cool, collectible decanter. So we're going to put it in there. And if you look at those old bottles, a lot of them will say – Aged for 120 months or aged for 150 months. So first of all, they're trying to hide a little bit that it's old whiskey. Well, today we'd be bragging about it, but this is a different time. So, and they also know people in Kentucky, a lot of us can't do math. So, <laughs> so you know, you they didn't want you to know it's well. 10 and 12 and 15 year old whiskey. I have been saying for the last few years, older American whiskeys is a modern phenomena. And it starts with... Things like the very special things that, that uh, Stitzelweller used to do with the very, very old Fitzgerald and this. You know, those were, uh, those were once a year like we do at Parker's or the birthday bourbons or that, the different, uh, different expressions uh, that different distilleries do. But then to have the foresight and Max uh, Shapira here and the distillers here with Parker and Craig to come out with a 12-year-old age state of 94-proof product that was – Nine dollars and ninety-nine cents. It wasn't until ninety, early nineties, ninety-two, ninety-four that the eighteen-year-old Elijah Craig comes out, and it kind of shines a little spotlight. Wow, this is pretty good. We had no idea this could be good. It was, I think, it was thirty-four ninety-nine, eighteen-year-old. And then a guy named Julian Van Winkle is going around. How else do you think Julian was able to walk up to a distillery and say, uh, how, I, "I want, I want all your old whiskey. Uh, you got anything that's fifteen, twenty, twenty-three years old, something like that?" You know, uh, what, what, why, why do you want it? I, I, I want to buy them. How do you think – you couldn't do that today. How no, do you think absolutely. he was able to do that back then? Because no one was drinking older whiskey. That's a modern phenomenon. So here he was able to go and just buy hundreds of barrels. And then we're – so between – we're kind of building – it's been since 1986 coming. So it's only been in the last few years people are like really worried about – not worried – really giving more credence to old whiskey. I happen to like old whiskey. Like I said, over 15, I, I like the R18. I like 23. It's good, but I kind of like younger whiskey. That's why we make a lot of them. I don't have to like them all. I can appreciate them for what they are. If we've always taken age statements. If you have more of something, you put an age on it before because they, they do go bad after a while. After about 25, 27, 30 years, you're not going to have anything left in the barrel anyway. But then it can be, if it's from a top floor, it can be too much oak, too much tannins. That's why all of our older whiskey comes from the first floor because it's, and we've been making older whiskey for a longer, longer than most people, so we can do that. And we, we know where they store them and stuff. Just because you have 25-year-old whiskey doesn't mean it's good. Right. It depends on where it ages. I mean, when, when Jack Daniels took uh, from 90 to 86 proof and from 86 proof to 80 proof, no one cared. No one even noticed. So years later, eh? Just a few years ago, Basil Hayden lost an age statement. Used to be eight. Didn't hear about that. No one was called names. No one was called liars. No one was called trying to cover things up. No conspiracy. 
It's only been in the past few years. We have more bloggers. We have Twitters. We have tweets. We have all this pup yeah, under like a, more, and... more under a microscope. And they go, well, you're just trying to make more money. Well, you, well, if we were, we'd be charging more than $26 for a 12-year-old product. So you're faced with decisions. We can't help that you're drinking it mm-hmm. all. That's why you tell them. Right. <laughs> so when you're faced with a decision like uh, like like you have that, you can go the way you can you can you can say we're going to keep. And I've been I've been talking openly about this at all the whiskey shows and everything. Pretend you're a family member or on the leadership team or on the distilling team. You get a vote. You get an equal vote. We're selling more Elijah Craig now than we've ever sold ever. It, the brand's doing phenomenal. It's doing so good. We're going to run out of 12-year-old barrels. Let's not forget we also have an 18 and 23, so we got to – those barrels become 18 and 23. They, they, you just don't all of a sudden create 18-year-old whiskey. So some, there's going to have to be a decision made yeah. because cause demand is way outstripping supply. This is 12 years ago. We can't – there's that darn time machine we don't have, right? <laughs> so, so we can't – so we got we to we gotta deal with reality and make a tough decision. What are you going to do, Ryan? What are you going to do, Kenny? Are you going to keep it on or are you going to take it off? Right. You each get a vote. What would you vote? Well, I mean, it's a pretty pretty simple mm-hmm. thing, right? I mean, if you got to be able to It's take, not gotta, simple and it's not easy and it's tough decisions, but so let's I'm what would you do? I mean, I, I What totally, would your vote be? I totally agree. I, I think that No, I'm that, asking you what your vote would be. Okay, my vote <laughs> my vote would be to take it off. Mm-hmm. And that's only just because you have to be able to keep up with demand, right? The last thing you want to do is just have a complete shortage in the market where yeah. it's just it's just off the shelf, right? You you still want to have that presence and that brand presence. And at the end of the day, I don't think the quality of the product is going to suffer at all, right? I think it's still going to be the same quality. I mean, it's not like you're sitting there thinking, oh, dear Lord, we've lost like, you know, 20-year bourbons and like they're all gone. What's going to happen? Like, you're right. I, I think you're totally right. I, I I don't think you're going to see much difference, and you're not talking about a hundred and fifty dollar whiskey, right? You're talking about a you know some twenty six dollars, twenty six thirty dollar bottle. We'd like right? to be up. We'd, we'd like to get it up to a little bit like towards thirty dollars to deal with the the other age products that are that we're competing against in those super what we call a super premium, premium brand. Yeah. Still on the lower side. Let's just say, for, just for uh, double, you would say, I want to keep it on. Right? I want to keep it on. Yeah, <laughs> keep it on. So if you keep it on, that's fine. Then you kind of, I mean, we saw what happened with WL Weller 12. It goes away. So it's still around. You can still get it, and it's at a very good price. But you've got to be on a it's list. It's impossible to find. You've got to be on a list. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So all of a sudden, it never makes it to a shelf. So the brand doesn't grow, and you've got to charge more for it because you're not having that growth, and you're not building the brand. So you've got to make that money up that you were making before. So now you're going to have to charge $20, $30, dollars $40 in addition to what it was. And that is a total different option to do. You can do that, but these that's the ramifications. So at the time you make these decisions and you're gonna make someone mad. Because if you keep it on You can't please everyone. You're gonna be a little upset because now it's fifty dollars. And you can't find and it. And I can't find it. <laughs> if we take it off, you can still find it, but you want twelve. Yeah. The difference with we had is we had a unique situation when we were out of the 18. Remember, we had that little fire, and mm-hmm. so 18 years ago, 18, 19 years ago, so it put a, so we were out of some stocks. So the 18 went dark for about a couple of years. Mm-hmm. Just came back. What we did is we brought products out. Because rarely was those just 18 years old. A lot of those were 20, 21, 22, and 23 years old. If you ever look in the back of one of those old 18 bottles, you'll see that this was that was the minimum 18-year-old. Minimum yeah. yeah. So that's why we started bottling the 20 by itself and 21 by itself and 22 by itself and 23 by itself to show spotlight that, no, the 18's coming back. But no one believed us. I got a... People all the time. Oh, you're stop making it. It's not available. It'll be back, and it came back. We didn't. We weren't lying. It came back. Right. You know. And they, they don't trust you either. People don't. They oh, you're, you're just saying that. Well, and there's all certain things that we're as the face of the brand. I'm told some, certain things to say and certain things. Uh, they, we got to control this so people don't go out and hoard and people don't go out and you know do crazy things. Things are different than they used to be. So we came that, and also we we, we uh, came out with the barrel proof Elijah Craig, and boy. People really ate it love up. Love that, and the color is so dark, and it's so great. So what we've done is we've, I think, made the best of both worlds. We've got a non-age stated, 
8 to 12 year old mingle that's going to be the small batch and we've got a 12 year barrel proof that the age statement's staying on so we can do both so if you want Elijah Craig 12 year old age stated it's out there. <laughs> That's how I prefer it's it. Barrel anyway, proof, it's barrel proof, but it's out there. And you got to get on a list. And now <laughs> you're going to have to live with a beautiful small batch that's going to be 30 bucks and available. So that's what we did. So yeah. you can call us liars. No. You can call, I've been called liar. I've been called a liar. <laughs> what is that? But, yeah. but it, it's okay. I did comedy for 20 years. I can take a little heckling. <laughs> but that's just the decision. It's right. a business decision. Absolutely. And, you know, there are distilleries. Stitzel Weller is not here anymore. So th- there's decisions you have to make that are tough. And we're here to – it's a business. Well, good deal. So we're, uh, we, we've way gone over our 30 minutes, and that's, ah. that's fantastic because I think we've got some great, great content here. Mm-hmm. But we'll finish it up, and I want to just kind of highlight some more things on your personal side is you also play a lot of guitar. You do bluegrass music. Uh, kind of give the listeners kind of an idea of, of what you do and where you're going to be doing it. Sure. Well, let's finish up with a little song. There we go. Yeah. do that. Hooked up with my buddy uh, Hickory Vaught, who's a great bluegrass musician in town. And I've always wanted to pick bluegrass. It's, I've always played guitar. But I wanted to be able to pick bluegrass and be a real bluegrass picker. And this has allowed me to be able to learn how to do that. When I came to Heaven Hill, I was like, well, this is a great opportunity. And we have so many different whiskeys with so many different recipes. I don't know where to start. You know, I don't, we have so many different, you know, how do you do a tasting? And I finally put together that we have a, we can do a tasting of, how bourbon evolved from unaged corn whiskey to aged corn whiskey, wheat whiskey, rye whiskey, and bourbon whiskey that are bottle and bond and a small batch and single barrel. That's the evolution of, of bourbon, how bourbon became the bourbon that we have today. And so Hickory was like, well, don't leave me out of this. <laughs> and I want to jump in on this. So we play live bluegrass music from the 1700s, early 1800s, and, and through. So it's either music from the time period or about the time period that we're playing. So when you're sipping on mellow corn, which is an aged corn whiskey, uh, we play a song called Copper Kettle. Get your copper kettle, get your copper coil, fill it with new-made corn mash, never will you toil. So it's about making corn whiskey in the early 1800s. That's pretty dang on cool when you're sipping on the product and hearing music from Kentucky about it. So that's what we do with uh, that, and that's going to be one of the – golden ticket things you can buy for, for at the uh, bourbon uh, affair this year awesome is the bourbon through bluegrass show yeah so that's fun so this is a song uh, called the distillers row so when you go to bardstown you know uh, on north third street there yep. that's where all the distillers live so you could go and the samuels are next door to the beams and then they're all distillers around and when you go to whiskey row here in uh, in louisville different distilleries so there's 23 bourbons in this song yeah, so 23 my old granddad He passed away, but he lived 94 years to the day. He's laid to rest right up on Heaven Hill with a spray of four roses on his grave. He drink a quart each and every day of some good store-bought Jim Beam. Dr. Forrester said, hey, Pappy, now you better cut it down. But then the good doc passed away, so who's to say... So raise a red eye to old granddad He lived to be an ancient age That old crow sure left his maker's mark And now he's drinking with the angels far away and it goes on from there. But well, you got to come to the show to hear the rest. There That's you right. go. <laughs> Fantastic. That's awesome. Bourbon Pursuit first. He's the most yeah. versatile guy I've known. Yeah, I know. How about it? He's everywhere. Hey, I'm not a master of silver. i got to dazzle him somehow. That's right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, Bernie, well, once again, thank you for coming on the show today. It's been a pleasure uh, talking and, and really picking your mind, picking your guitar. There you go. Uh, it's really a pleasure, I think, for at least this side of the table. Well, yeah. thank you. My head's still it. spinning from all the knowledge we got. <laughs> still trying to take it all in, so I appreciate it. Well, awesome. Well, I appreciate your all's uh, 
uh, passion and spreading the word of uh, Amer- American uh, whiskey and bourbon around the world because you're on the World Wide Web, and I'm going to Europe tomorrow. So. There you right. go. Have well, a good luck there. Appreciate it. Yeah, so if you like what you hear, make sure you subscribe to us on iTunes. You can also follow us on Instagram uh, and Twitter uh, at The Bourbon Pursuit. You can also like us on Facebook. We're all over the social media, so make sure you follow us and talk to us as well because uh, we're pretty good guys to follow and spread all kinds yeah, of good we're, cheer there. we're interesting. Kenny's better than I am, but... We're, we're definitely here. But thanks, guys. And if you have any show suggestions or feedback, we appreciate that as well. So, and uh, we'll see you next time.